The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. This afternoon and this evening, all over the country, Equitable Society representatives have been calling their friends on the telephone. Hello? Good evening, Mr. Long. This is Frank Morris, representing the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Mr. Long, I just wanted to remind you to listen to the Equitable Society's program tonight. It's This Is Your FBI. Yeah, I know. I listen every Friday. Well... Tonight, the Equitable Society has an announcement that is going to interest you personally. The Equitable Society has just issued a new and enlarged edition of its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Don't miss the middle commercial. Find out how to get your copy of the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Tonight's FBI file... The Happy Honeymooners. Crime in the United States today is at an all-time high. And the figures gathered by your FBI and by other law enforcement agencies are enough to shock even the most complacent into a realization that the time to fight the crime wave is now. There is an average of more than 2,000 thefts committed in this country every day, or more than one every minute around the clock. That fact is serious enough. But even more serious is the companion truth that crime, like any disease, spreads quickly when it remains unchecked. We are all about to enter a new year, If we all do our part to help fight that crime wave, it can be a year to be remembered with pride. If we fail to do our part, then the same crimes we suffered this year will be repeated. With one difference, there will be more of them. Tonight's file opens on a remote country lane in one of our Midwestern states. It is early afternoon, and a young boy and girl are riding along the river road in a brand-new convertible. Isn't this nice, honey? Oh, it's lovely, Eddie. Just lovely. <laughs> Happy? Very. Oh, look at that view. You can see ten miles up the river. Uh-huh. Oh, gee, I wish we could sometime settle down in a place like this. I hate to keep traveling all the time. Well, I don't like it too much myself, dear, but I you I know. Gotta... Business comes first. That's right. Well, this is where we get out. What do you mean? Look through those trees. You see that cabin? Uh-huh. It's ours. What? I rented it this morning. Oh, Eddie, you didn't. I've got the keys right here. Come on. Oh, Eddie, this is such a wonderful surprise. I hoped you'd think so. Gee. Just what I've always dreamed about. Honest? Honest. It's perfect. I just wish now that... You wish what, honey? Well, I don't want to have to leave this. So you don't. You mean we're going to settle down? Be in one place? Yeah. But what about work? Oh, well, we'll keep working. In fact, we got a job tonight. We're sticking up a jewelry store. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. Ring the bell. Okay. Gee, what a ring. Yeah. You think anybody's home? Oh, oh yeah, I checked. Yes? Uh, good evening, Mr. Mitchell. Good evening. I'm sorry to trouble you, but my car broke down outside your door. I was wondering whether I might use your phone to call a garage. Certainly. Right in. Oh, thanks. Go ahead. Okay. Who is it, dear? 
A young couple. Their car broke down and they want to use the phone. Oh. Well, Howard asked them to take off their coats. They must be drenched. I'll uh, keep mine on, Mrs. Mitchell. I'm going right out again. In fact, your husband's coming with me. But... Oh, what? Howard, he's got a gun. What is this? Now don't get excited, folks. Howard, please. this is a holdup. If it is, he's wasting his time. We have nothing of value here. We know that, Mr. Mitchell. Then what? My husband wants you to take him down to your jewelry store. Then, if you don't mind, he'd like to have you open your safe. I won't do it. Mr. Mitchell, this gun here says you got him. Howard, you better do as he says. He's right, Mr. Mitchell. All right, Mary. I'll go with him. Oh, swear. What happens to my wife? Oh, my bride won't mind staying here with her, will you, Lucy? Of course not. I just love to visit. She'll stay here till I get the jewelry. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Mitchell. Yes? She has a gun, too. Well, come on, sir. We better get going. Very well. Wait, Eddie. Huh? It's such a nasty night out, honey. Ask Mr. Mitchell if he'd mind bringing an umbrella. That same evening in the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk just finishing a report on his last case. Busy, Jim? Hmm? Oh, hello, Doug. What are you doing around the office this late? Oh, the boss called me at home and asked me to come in. Huh? Something special come up? Maybe yes, maybe no. Will you wait one second while I sign this report in the Fulton case, and I'll be all finished here. Yeah, I'm certainly glad that file is closed. Oh, my. I don't want any more of those tough cases. I'd like to work on a simple one for a change. We don't get any simple ones. Uh, I guess not. Well, what have you got, Doug? Well, about two weeks ago, two youngsters stuck up a jeweler in Memphis, and we just got word from the Memphis office about it. Memphis thinks they're headed this way? That's it. The switchboard is working now, covering every hotel in town. But I doubt that it'll do any good. Oh, why not? Well, the descriptions aren't good enough. Too general. Hmm. But all we know is that one is a girl, and that both the girl and boy are blonde. Mm-hmm. Anything unusual about the robbery? Yes. They went to the home of the jeweler at night, forced him to ride back to the store and open the safe. Well, that's a no wrinkle. You know, I wish people would pay more attention to robbers when they're held up. Not one in 20 can give you any kind of a description at all. Well, this jeweler in Memphis claims he was so scared he forgot everything. Hey, how'd they get into the jeweler's house? Oh, phony story about the car breaking down outside the door. I see. What do you think we ought to do first, Jim? Well, let's see. It's, uh, 7 o'clock now. I guess all the jewelry stores are closed by now, aren't they? Well, I imagine so. Well, we'd better get a list of the home phone numbers of every jeweler in town. You know, I think I know where I can lay my hands on that kind of a list, Jim. Fine. Get the list, and we'll split it up and make the calls ourselves. Uh, Doug, how long will it take you to get the numbers? Oh, about 15 minutes at most. Good. I'll wait right here for you. When you get back, we'll go to work. <laughs> Gee, Mrs. Mitchell, I wish you'd stop that crying. Everything's going to be all right. I know it is. Look. Worrying isn't going to do you a bit of good. I know from experience. When I first started dating, Eddie used to do jobs all by himself, and I used to just worry myself sick about him. But he always came home safe and sound. Oh, please leave me alone. Well, I'm only trying to be sociable. I'm only trying to point out that you shouldn't be so unhappy. In fact, if I was you, I'd be glad. My gosh, you've got a beautiful home here. You don't have to travel. You've got lots to be thankful for, Mrs. Mitchell. Why did you have to pick on us? Huh? There are other jewelers in this city. Why did you pick on my husband? Well, you know, that's a funny thing. We went window shopping one day, and we passed your husband's store, and I saw a ring in the window that I was just nuts about. So right then and there, I said, it... Wait, Mrs. Mitchell, before you answer it, I'll have to ask that you don't let on that anything's wrong and make the conversation very short. Very well. Hello? Ah, uh, hello, Mrs. Mitchell? May I speak to my wife, please? It's for you. Thank you. Hello? Hello, honey. Everything's fine down here. Mr. Mitchell was very cooperative. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll be leaving here in a few minutes. I'll see you back at the cabin. Well, how are you going to get there? Oh, in Mr. Mitchell's car. Well, that's nice of him. All right, dear, I'll meet you in about half an hour. Oh, fine. I love you, honey. I love you, baby. Bye-bye. Goodbye. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mitchell, but I've got to go now. Thank you. Before I leave, though, please be a lamb and let me tie you up. Hi, 
Yeah, Jim, how you coming? Made my last call a minute ago. How about you? I just finished. Well, I'll be tougher than to pull that same stunt on any jeweler around here. Yeah, I think so. Hey, uh, any numbers on your list that didn't answer? Yes, two. Hmm? Say, um, how about the newspaper? I've already called them, Doug. They'll use the story tomorrow. Oh, excuse me. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Mr. Taylor, this is Sergeant Drew down at headquarters. Yes, Sergeant. We just got a call from a Mrs. Howard Mitchell in Springtown. Mm-hmm. She says a young couple came into her house tonight, made her husband go down to his store and open the safe. Uh, Sergeant, is Mr. Mitchell a jeweler by any chance? That's right. How'd you know? We've been looking for that couple, Sergeant. Have you got any descriptions on them? <laughs> Not very much. Mrs. Mitchell was too excited to tell me more than just the bare facts. Mm-hmm. You say this Mr. Mitchell was brought into the city from Springtown. That's right. That's across the state line, Mr. Taylor. That's why I called you. That makes it a kidnapping case. Uh, Sergeant, what's Mrs. Mitchell's address? 169 Bedford Street, Springtown. 169 Bedford. And the address of her husband's store? 1218 Fifth Avenue. 1218 Fifth. Thanks very much, Sergeant. We'll get on it right away. Doug, we've got some work to do. What's that, Jim? A young couple has already pulled a job. Well, so I gather. A local jeweler was taken from his home to his store. Here's the address of the store, Doug. You check there. I'm going out to the man's home. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, oh, just a second. Oh, baby, you're soaked. I know. Oh, gee, why didn't you blow the horn or something? I would have come out with Mr. Mitchell's umbrella. Oh, that's okay. Let me get this coat off. Sure, let me help you. My gosh, I never saw such rain. Yeah, I know. Eddie, where's the jewelry? Oh, right over there in that bag. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Okay, I'll get it for you. Okay. Eddie? Yeah. Isn't that Mr. Mitchell there in the corner? Mm-hmm. Well, what's he doing here? Oh, I brought him back with me. Looks like he's tied up. He is. Here. Take a look at this stuff. Oh, Eddie. Real nice, huh? Oh, it's beautiful. And look here, honey. Remember this? It's a ring I like so much. Uh-huh. I had Mr. Mitchell make a special effort to put that in. Oh, honey, you're so thoughtful. Oh, that's okay. Eddie? Yeah, dear? What made you bring Mr. Mitchell home with you? Oh, we had a reason. We only have one bedroom. Well, he can sleep where he is tonight. What was your reason? Well, I figured he could afford to give us a little more money. Oh. Well, I called his wife and told her we were going to keep Mr. Mitchell until she gave us $20,000. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file which shows how your FBI promotes security for the nation. Now let's bring this question of security closer to home. Mac, you're a father. Did you ever see a chart like this before? Hmm. A fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. What's it all about, anyway? This fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers has just been published by the Equitable Society to perform a very useful service for a man like you. Go on, I'm listening, Mr. Keating. It was designed to show you how much money your family would really need to keep going if you should die. Fill in this fact-finding chart, and you'll know exactly what income will be required to keep your wife and children well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed. Hey, that's something every man with a family ought to figure out. Well, with this Equitable Society chart, you'll have the answer in five minutes flat. Look, you're guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures, which illustrate the rock-bottom expenses your family will have to meet. And when you're finished, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. Critical years? What's that mean? The years before your youngest child finishes high school. Years during which the home must have a minimum income to keep it together. Okay. I'm going to buy one of these fact-finding charts tomorrow. Now, they're not for sale, Mac. They're free. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy. Sit down with him, you and your wife together. There's no obligation, and get a true picture of where you stand. Phone him tomorrow to bring you an equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard, care of this ABC station, to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Happy Honeymooners.
according to the most recent figures available, there are approximately seven and one half million persons with arrest records in the United States today. And like any other group of people, they have certain things in common. But there is one thing which each criminal has that is his and his alone, his appearance. No two criminals look alike any more than any two decent citizens look exactly alike. It has been a popular misapprehension that you can spot a criminal by watching him. Experts in the living habits and movements of criminals like the special agents of your FBI will be the first to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. There is absolutely no way to tell a criminal from a law-abiding person until one of them commits a crime. For that reason, your FBI advises extreme caution in dealing with any strangers. Do not assume that every stranger is a thief. But by the same token, being careful may save you from becoming another victim of America's current crime wave. Tonight's file continues in the FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor has just returned to the office from his interview with Mrs. Mitchell. Well, Jim, I see you got soaked, too. Yeah, out of the skin. I don't think I ever saw it rain this way. Well, I certainly hope your trip was more productive than mine. Nothing at the store at all, huh? Not a thing. The police had already arrived when I got there, and they went over everything. How about the safe? Oh, it was wide open and empty. No fingerprints? None at all. Mm. I imagine that Mitchell must have opened the safe himself, but if he did, he was wearing gloves. How about Mrs. Mitchell? Well, she was all right until she got a phone call from the man the girl called Eddie... Eddie said he was holding Mr. Mitchell for $20,000 ransom. Mm -hmm. They didn't kidnap the jeweler in Memphis. No, no, they just robbed him. This is something new. How is uh, Mrs. Mitchell going to contact them? Oh, she's not. When Eddie called, she said that she didn't have $20,000, so he said he'd give her a little while to dig it up, that he'd uh, call her back. Well, any call out to Springtown is a long-distance call, Jim. Uh, I know. The phone company is going to trace any call made to the Mitchell's number. Mm -hmm. We'd better sit right here until they call. Yeah, that's about all we can do. Could Mrs. Mitchell uh, describe the couple? Only very poorly. She was practically in hysterics now, Doctor. She couldn't... Oh, pardon me. Special Agent Taylor. This is Sergeant Drew again. Yes, Sergeant. Mrs. Mitchell got another call from the kidnapper. How long ago? About five minutes ago. Operator, trace it. Yes, she said the call came from Centerville. Centerville 842. Centerville 842. Thanks, Sergeant. We'll get on it right away. That was our call, Doug. Mitchell is being held at the house with the phone number Centerville 842. Let's check that number and get out there as fast as we can. I was just listening to the most wonderful program on the radio. All about a woman who forgets her name and she can't remember where she uh, lives. Uh, and... Look, look, dear. I'm trying to make a rough estimate on these jewels. Tell me later, huh? But, Eddie, the announcer broke into the middle of it. Oh, what did he say? He said that the river was rising. Okay. He said it'll flood the whole valley, that everyone will be marooned here after the night. Hey, that's not so good. What do we do, honey? We're practically next to the river. Yeah. I think maybe we'd better get out of here. Oh. Look, if we're marooned here, we'll get picked up for everything. Well, what do we do with Mr. Mitchell? We we'll just have to leave him here. How about the $20,000 for Mrs. Mitchell? I think we better settle for the jewels. Are your bags still packed? Yes. Well, you better get them and we better get going. Well, can't we wait about 10 more minutes? What for? I want to hear how that program comes out. <laughs> Look at that river, Jim. Yeah, it's really roaring. I don't think I've ever seen it that high. It's flood stage, all right. Think the bridge will still be open? All we can do is hope. Well, if it's closed, we don't get across. Mm, I know. Look, Jim. Huh? There's a man with a lantern in the road. Yeah, yeah, I see him. Coming around on my side. I'll roll my window down, Doug. Sorry, sir. The bridge is closed. We're both special agents of the FBI. You're my credentials. Is there any chance of us getting across? Oh, I wouldn't suggest it. Huh? How bad is it? There's no telling. But you can gamble if you want to. Doug? Any way you want it, Jim. Well, let's take a chance. Okay with me? We're going to try it. Well, good luck. I sure hope you make it. Thanks. The left a little, Jim. Okay. Hold it. Huh? 
What is it? That railing's down. Suppose that means anything? Well, let's find out. The water looks pretty deep up ahead. Yeah. I think we can keep the wires dry for a short slot. Okay, now, this is the end of the bridge. Yeah. Now, let's go find our couple. They've gone all right. Look, there's Mitchell tied up over there in the corner. Yeah. How is he, Jim? Mm. He's breathing, but he's unconscious. Come on. Come on, it's in time. Get him to a doctor and then come back here. Daddy. Hmm? You know, how was you thinking? About what, honey? About how nice it must be to live like Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell. What do you mean? You know, with a nice home and pictures on the wall. And a place where you can have your friends over for dinner. Hey, you're not sorry you married me, are you, honey? No, Eddie, you know I'm not. Oh, it's just that I wish you weren't a traveling man. Oh, but you knew what business I was in when we got married. I know, dear. I'm not complaining, honey. What are you stopping for, honey? Well, there's a fork in the road, a... Uh, take a look at the map and see which way we go, huh? Oh, Eddie, I forgot it. I left it in the cabin. Oh. Well, I'll take a chance on this right turn. Where are we going, honey? To Chicago and sell the jewelry. And then on to New York. Come on, Doug. I want to see where this door leads to. All right. What's there, Jim? It's a shed attached to the cabin. It's been used as a garage. Mitchell's car is here. They must have used their own car for a getaway. Uh-huh. What do you got there? A map. I wonder if it was theirs. Is that a route marked on it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the road between here and Chicago. Well, it still doesn't help much. We don't know what kind of a car they were driving. We don't know what they looked like. Uh-huh. Aside from that, everything's under control. Uh-huh. Not much point in setting up a roadblock if we haven't got a description. Wait a minute, Doug. Well, look here. Hmm. Look, this can give us one lead on that young couple. Come on, let's get to the phone. Take a right turn here, Jim. I know. Got about five more miles to go. Uh Uh-huh. You spoke to Mitchell's wife. Yes, I called her from the doctor's home. I told her he'd be okay. I hope that roadblock has been set up. I just hope it was set up in time. There's a line of cars up ahead, Jim. That's the beginning of the roadblock. Like a hundred cars or more. I was hoping there wouldn't be that many. What are they all doing out in weather like this? They're probably trying to get into the city before both bridges go out. Do we start at the head of the line? No, Doug. We'll park it here and walk up. About 20 more cars, Jim. Well, we can't get any wetter. That's one consolation. Yeah, that's true. Now, well, let's take a look at this convertible. Okay. Doug? Yeah? Shine your flashlight closer, will you? How's that? Yeah, that's fine. I think we may have something here. keep us waiting here. Oh, a man said it'd be only a couple of minutes. He said they were fixing a road. Well, this is certainly a silly time to be fixing a road. That's all I can say. Well, maybe the storm washed some of the gravel away. Eddie. Huh? Look, here on my side. Well, what is it? There's two men standing there. Oh, maybe their car got stuck. They're looking in, Eddie. Maybe they're cops. 
We better get out of here. Hey, that's what we're going to do. Look out, Eddie. They both got guns. There you are. Oh, no. Special agents, the FBI. What do you want? We want you for armed robbery and kidnapping. Well, you must be mistaken. No, no. no your car left its signature in the dirt floor of the garage by your cabin. Huh? Your left rear tire had a deep gash in its diamond-shaped thread. That's all we had to look for, but it was enough. Mister, can you close the door? I'm getting soaked. Now, don't worry about that, lady. Both of you are going to a place where you'll be dry for a long, long time. The wanton young couple was sentenced to 25 years and 15 years, respectively, for kidnapping and violation of the National Stolen Property Act. And thus, by careful investigation and hard work, your FBI thwarted the get-rich-quick scheme of another pair of criminals. A pair who proved they would stop at nothing. A pair who, though young and innocent in appearance, were as completely criminal as any murderers on record. That their well-laid plans came to nothing is a tribute to the thoroughness with which two special agents followed every clue and kept following them until they achieved the two goals of your FBI in every kidnapping case. The safe return of the victim and the capture of the criminals. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now back to the news we announced in our middle commercial. The new and enlarged fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Just issued by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Uh, Mr. Keating, let's see if I've got this straight. The purpose of this chart is to give me a true picture of the minimum income required to give my family a decent standard of living if I should die. That's right, Mac. And the man who'll see that you get one of these fact-finding charts is your Equitable Society representative. No charge or obligation, of course. Phone your Equitable Society representative soon. Or send a postcard, care of this ABC station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Meanwhile, your Equitable Representative wishes you a very happy New Year. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A case involving the operations of a gang of professional thieves. Its subject, bank robbery. Its title... The Sorrowful Safe Cracker. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis, your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Sorrowful Safe Cracker on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.